speak to bond, Your Honor, as the court, when the court deems it appropriate. Thank you. Do you wish to address bond first, or I'll hear from whoever wishes to speak first? Thank you very much, Your Honor. I'm sure this court has read our bond motion that we filed on behalf of Mr. Anderson. And as this court is aware, pursuant to the Ohio Revised Code 2937.011, the court shall release the defendant on the least restrictive conditions that, one, assure the defendant's appearance in court, two, assure that he's not a danger to the community, and three, assure that he will not obstruct the criminal justice process. Your Honor, when you look at the factors delineated in 2937.011, we submit these factors favor a reasonable bond not to exceed $250,000. Concerning his appearance in court, Your Honor, my client is 60 years old. He's got no prior record whatsoever. He has no history of KPSs, warrants, or order ends. When he did find out, Your Honor, that there was in fact a warrant for his arrest, he voluntarily surrendered himself to the Franklin County Jail. Your Honor, this incident occurred 11 months ago. During those 11 months, my client has complied with this investigation. He provided a written statement. He allowed his passport to expire. For 11 months, Your Honor, he remained in this jurisdiction, awaiting the presentment of his case to the grand jury. He knew that this case was going to be presented. He knew he was still under investigation, and yet he still remained in Franklin County. As such, Your Honor, we submit that he is not a flight risk, and this factor favors a reasonable bond. Concerning the safety of the community, Your Honor, in addition to the fact that my client has no record whatsoever, he has removed all of the firearms out of his home and no longer possesses them. He has retired from law enforcement. He has complied with mental health requirement, treatment requirements mandated by the Division of Police. On August 30th, 2022, Your Honor, he lawfully carried and was required to carry a gun when he had to face every police officer's nightmare and make a split-second decision, a defensive justification that this court is well aware is afforded to him by the Supreme Court of the United States. If the special prosecutors believed that Mr. Anderson was in fact a danger to the community, Your Honor, logic dictates that they would have rushed this process to the grand jury. However, they allowed him to remain in the community for 11 months. We submit, Your Honor, that the governmental inaction for those 11 months dictates that he is not in fact a danger to the community. And as such, Your Honor, this factor favors a reasonable bond. Concerning the third factor delineated in the Ohio Revised Code, Your Honor, whether Mr. Anderson will obstruct the criminal justice process. Your Honor, he was a police officer for 31 years. He voluntarily complied with all aspects of the investigation. There is no evidence whatsoever to support that my client will in fact obstruct the criminal justice process. And in fact, the evidence before this court in terms of compliance and in terms of lack of record dictate the opposite, that he will not obstruct the criminal justice process. Finally, Your Honor, every day this court works tirelessly to avoid the disparate treatment of similarly situated defendants. When analyzing bail, Your Honor, the need to avoid disparate treatment is key to both due process and equal protection. Mr. Collins and I have represented two law enforcement officers under nearly identical situations. They're both cited in my motion, which I provided to the court. One was given a $250,000 bond and the other was given a $100,000 bond. And so when you analyze the factors, Your Honor, set forth in 2937.011, coupled with the viable defense of justification and the need to avoid disparate treatment of similarly situated defendants, we submit, Your Honor, that Mr. Anderson should be granted a reasonable bond not to exceed $250,000. Thank you, Your Honor.
uh, and offered and was given an opportunity to sit down and, and be interviewed and he did not. So I just wanted to clarify a few things in their motion. Uh, with respect to bail, um, we're asking the court to set a, a commensurate uh, to the charges, the bail. Uh, that being taken the life of another, being murder, reckless homicide, and something that's not demeaning to the loss that this family has suffered. Uh, serious charges of this nature inherently create, uh, with all defendants, a risk of non-appearance. Uh, the grand jury, after a grand jury indictment, more so than beforehand. Uh, so, Your Honor, we would respectfully ask the court uh, that we believe that a, a uh, certain it's appropriate for the court to set a substantial bail, either surety, cash, or appearance, some type of financial bail in this matter, along with any other restrictions that the court feels would be necessary. Passport. I know they said that his passport has expired, perhaps in order that if he gets a passport, it's got to be turned in. Uh, obviously, weapons, that there'd be no weapons. And any other restrictions that this court deem would be appropriate to make sure that uh, that, he's, uh, uh, that he does uh, appear for all court proceedings. Thank you. Apart from the monetary um, part of this bond, and you've mentioned um, no weapons, and you've mentioned turning in the passport, are there any other conditions that, that we typically put on bonds that you're looking for? For example, are you looking for um, a no contact with any of the witnesses or anything of that nature? I don't know if that's necessary, but if the court feels that that would be appropriate in this case, that would be fine. Okay, so you're not specifically requesting that. Okay. Um, anything further? Your Honor, just that Mr. Anderson absolutely submitted a written statement to the BCI agents, and he did, in fact, comply with that request. I might add that written statement was over a month later. But After the incident? Yes. Okay, thank you. Not at the same. Thank whatever the court says is fine with us under these circumstances. The defendant has learned to plead not guilty. Bond is going to be a $500,000 surety or appearance bond, a $20,000 recognizance bond, and there are going to be two conditions placed upon the defendant's bond. First of all, he is not to possess use of firearm of any kind, and also he is, I understand the representation has been made that the passport has expired, but I am making it a condition of bond that he surrender the passport. So, thank you all very much. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Honor.